Hey y'all, we're back today. How are y'all this afternoon? I see it's afternoon. Y'all hit the like button as you come in. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Um, I know some of you guys are coming back from a yesterday's video that was live and it was about, you know, trashiness. I'm sorry if any of you got offended but it was for tough love. So, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. It's only to help you, not to hurt you. Okay. So, um, don't feel too bad. Just figure out what you're going to do. <laughs> anyway. So, yes. We're going to be talking about emotions. How they are best scripted, then acted out. Not react it to immediately, you know. Um, so many women asked me to redo this video so many times about how to control emotions. Well, you don't react emotionally. You hold back, think about how you can benefit from the situation. You script out your emotions and how they're gonna best benefit you. And then you act it out. You don't just lash out like a wild animal. You use strategy and you are strategic and you get your money, okay? If you are acting out of rage, of unable to control your emotions, you're not leveled up mentally, period, okay? No matter what you look like, if you can't control your emotions, you are not mentally leveled up, okay? You are, you are not mentally leveled up. And you, if you can't control them, it means you can't be... Um, able to manipulate in the way that you desire. It means whoever is triggering you emotionally has control over you. And it is not the other way around. So y'all need to figure it out and work on it because a lot of people mess up entire situations, entire sugar daddy situations, entire relationship because they can't hold their tongue and their emotion. No one cares. No one cares about how you feel. Let's just get that out there. So by you overreacting and lashing out, it's only going to make it worse for you. No one else. Okay. So y'all know. No one else cares enough about how you feel on the inside to really forgive anything that you do. And it's always going to be there in their mind, in their memory, and they're going to judge you by it. So learn how to control yourself. If you don't know how to control yourself, then... Don't be around people that trigger you. It's better to not say anything and just leave than to react and do something that you cannot take back and that you regret and that keeps you from getting your money, period. Okay. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but people still cannot control themselves. It is it is sad that as a grown woman, people could go to school, get degrees, you know, dress nice smell good, look good, but can't control themselves. That is the one thing that you need to get a hold of and make it work in your favor. Okay? Because a man can control you if you can't control yourself. I will repeat that as well as other people. Anyone can control you if you cannot control your emotions. It is a free range of control if you can't control your emotions. So anybody that knows your trigger can control you, period. This is how the media works. The media can control people through emotion. Um, and so if you can't practice this on a daily basis, then that is one of the main things that you need to really focus on for your level up this year. Don't don't let 2020 go by without you being in control of your emotions, because this is going to be key in order to move forward in the future. Because if I see that you're emotional and I can trigger you, if I want something, if I want to take something from you, all I got to do is allow a certain person to see you acting a certain way. And so that they view me in a more sophisticated, um, mature way. And I can take your job. I could take your man. I could take whatever I want if I know your triggers. I, I don't want your man, but 
uh, I don't want your job either, but I'm just saying a coworker, someone, you know, that's, you know, not so nice in your life, a friend of me, whoever, if they can control your emotion, they can control your life as well. Just remember that. So y'all need to get it under control, get it under control. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying don't have them at all, but wait till you react. Just go somewhere, cry, whatever, put your mascara back on and come back out and execute your strategy accordingly. You'll get stronger and stronger each time you learn to hold it back. And before long, it won't even react. You won't even react to it. You'll automatically simply just think about how you can get something out of it. It will become a habit to you. And you won't even be like, I'm mad. You'll be like, okay, well, thank you for uh, giving me this uh, fuel to get something that I want. Let's see how she react. And then you'll have time to think about it. You, you don't have to be like lashing out all the time unless you scripted that in your script in order to get something or in order to do something. But you don't need to do that automatically. Okay. <laughs> Mm hmm. And y'all keep asking me, would I be hurt? The only thing that would hurt me is if I ever thought that I, I, I don't think I would be hurt. Like, honestly, I don't think I would be hurt at all. I, I might be disappointed. I might be upset, but I would never really be hurt. There's not too much that can hurt me. Okay. So I don't really invest my emotions into something that is not something that I really have an emotional response to. Unless, you know, a family and children are, are totally different than men. Men come and go, period. Okay, Children, forever. So it's it probably is more heartbreaking for a mother's child to betray her or to do something wrong than it is for some some dude some man you know so i would i only put my um real emotions into my children okay i don't put them in no man baby period i get another one period point blank all the time every day no problem uh i might be disappointed but you know I'll be on to the next very soon if that would were to ever happen and I felt like I needed to go. So I don't really put any type of, you know, emphasis on how would I feel if James did this and that? How would he feel if I did it? That's what I'd be asking myself. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes. So we're going to control our emotions. We're not going to, our life does not end if someone decides to do what they want to do. Let's just put it that way. Our life doesn't end if someone doesn't call you. Our life doesn't end if someone cancels a date. Our life don't end if someone divorces you. Our life does not end if someone curses you out. It don't matter. Go get another one. Go do something to make yourself feel good and start fresh the next day. You don't have to allow emotions to create the life. Half the people in prison, no, 90% of the people in prison can't control emotion. And so that's where they go. OK, 90 percent of people on probation can't control emotion. That's why they on probation. The only reason some people get away with murder is because they can control their emotions and plot and ski and, and, and play it out. Thank you, Matessa Sprinkle Sprinkle. Please don't do the off topics. I'm going to save this to the end. Sprinkle Sprinkle. Just just put on a, a, a video a, a, someone doing their hair and makeup and, and follow along. Yes. Thank you for the donation. But if you are unmotivated, find inspiration on online and do your makeup, baby. You're going to be unmotivated when somebody, you know, overlooks you that, that could have been the one. I bet you won't be unmotivated then. Always look good. I, I don't care. Don't leave the house if you look bad, period. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So, yeah, everybody in prison, most likely, can't control emotion. Most people have issues with controlling self. So someone else has to control you. 
Okay. Oh, well, they can't control themselves. They got to be locked up. Oh, well, she can't control herself. She needs to be fired or, you know, whatever, whatever. So it's not your right to react because your right gets taken away if you get arrested. But it is your choice. And like I keep telling y'all, emotions are a choice. You have one second before you start reacting in a dumb way to catch yourself and think about it. And y'all need to start using that second. Y'all need to start using that one second. That's with anybody. That's with anybody. You don't even have to be no man. With anybody. With a, with a child. Before you say something you can't take back. Some of y'all parents should have used that second before they started talking. Okay? Because sometimes... People are angry and they, they might not mean what they say, but after it's out, that doesn't mean whoever heard it doesn't think they mean it. So hold your tongue sometime. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're an emotional person or, or a controlling... You want most people that are super emotional are super controlling. I'm gonna tell y'all why. Thank you, lady. Be forever sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, most people that are super emotional are super controlling, and they get emotional when they can't control. And that's exactly how other people could control them by not allowing themselves to be controlled, which triggers your emotions. You can't control people. They are not robots. The best way to control anyone, and I've said this a million times, is to control your emotions. That's the best way to control people, is to control your own emotion. Because if they can't trigger you, then you got them. You know? There's nothing that they're going to be able to do to trigger you, and so they're stuck doing what they're supposed to be doing. You can't, you're not going to get mad and kick them out so they can go have a weekend with their friend or their mistress or whoever. You're not going to get mad and break up with them so they can go do what they want to do. Oh, no, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to break up with you. Bills are due. You know, we'll work on it. I understand. You, you're you only human. Bills are due. <laughs> you see? Instead of you overreacting, kicking somebody out, and now bills are due. What you going to do? You can't go out and get another one because bills are due. She he gone spending your bill money on some other chick. Okay, bills are due. Well, <laughs> but you're cut off. You're buying me a new purse, and bills are due. Oh, bills are due. You're cut off, and we're going to the dealership later on. But bills are due. Period. This is how those old wives from old money act when their husband's out doing whatever they're doing. They're just like, oh, I'm not giving all of this up. I have a very nice mansion. I have a nice car. Da, 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 da. You know, that's for those people. If you are just, if you go, if you don't tolerate cheating, always have another one on the back burner that you can easily transition to. Maybe somebody waiting for you at the rafters. Have your own business. Have your own money so that you're not stuck like Chuck because you couldn't shut it up. Okay, if you're going to talk trash, be able to back it up like Beyonce, you know, you'd be like, I can back it up. You're going to if you're going to be super emotional, be able to back it up and you don't need them, period. And you won't miss them and you don't want them back after you explode out on, them. you know, let that be your farewell. <laughs> or, you know, and, and sometimes you can't switch it around. I know so many people have asked, oh, I, I accidentally did this with a sugar daddy. How can I get them back? Girl, what, why did you do it? If you want them back, if you think you're going to want them back, if you might want them back in the future, shut it up. This is what the one second is for. You know, Melania, Melania Trump, you know, she want to cuss him out every every day and all day. But she know where the bag and the prize is. Okay. She ain't stupid. So just, <laughs> she ain't going to hold his hand though. Okay, she got hurt, <laughs> but she's not, she's not going to go off on him in public either. She's going to act the fart, act, act the fart, <laughs> act with the old fart, act the part, 
and get get her money. Okay, get her inheritance and her insurance or whatever she got going on. Whatever, she's gonna get it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. If my husband ever cheated on me, I don't know about it because I don't care. I don't look through people's phone. Them bills paid. I got everything I need. All right, yeah, I I don't care. I I don't think he is. He's home every day. He home more than I am. So I really wouldn't care. I didn't marry him for fidelity. <laughs> and I, I think he wanders more if I cheated. You see what I'm saying? That's why I go. <laughs> I'm the prize, remember? I'm like, y'all worried about somebody cheating that ain't the prize. I'm the prize. Maybe they need to be worried about if I cheated or if I'm cheating, if I ever cheated. This way y'all get it backwards. So is being demanding not feminine, how do you stop a person from pushing over on you and being demanding? Having standards from the start. Thank you, Ray. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Having standards from the start. I don't do that in a nice way. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to do that. Not being demanding. That's too masculine. And also, it also is too motherly. You don't want to be their mama. You don't want to be another man trying to control it. You just like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to do that. But good luck. Be off. Okay? You don't have to be mean. and You don't have to be masculine. You don't have to be, you know, you can be nice and feminine and say what you have to say. And da-da-da-da. You say, what if James gave me an STD? <laughs> James don't cheat, just so y'all know. <laughs> He's home more than I am. If he cheating, he cheating, uh... Within an hour or 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, he don't cheat. He's too old. He's too old. He already got the best thing ever. Who he going to find a little better than me? <laughs> okay. Um, but like to answer your question, I'm the prize, baby. I can cheat all day, every day if I want to. I'm, I got so much time on my free time on my hand. Y'all got to think. Y'all asking the wrong question. Why would James cheat? He got all of this. <laughs> okay. But like I said, if he decided he wanted to go out and do something or whatever, I'm sure he's smart enough to know that I would be able to tell. I'm very observant. I don't miss one thing. Okay. Yeah, he too old to be out there cheating, girl. Who who he gonna cheat with? Okay. All right. So yeah, we're not talking about James either. Like, if y'all got a man who's who's cheating, if he cheated before, he got a you know da da da. Then you know, make sure he got some money to pay for that cheating. Okay. Make sure he got some money to pay for that cheating. You say he gonna cheat with his first wife? Well, she don't live in the, she don't live here. <laughs> okay, and I don't think she want him anyway. <laughs> but thanks for looking out, y'all. And if he ever did, and I and I caught him, then you know I'd be saving myself a lot a lot of time and energy. Um, or I'd have. You know, a very nice car. <laughs> you know, like, you know, super nice, super nice. Y'all see me like, I'll be driving around filming and vlogging. Y'all like, guess what, y'all? James cheated. Y'all like my car from here? I'll put that on the driver's license. So he cheated. All right. Y'all, y'all know, because I'm going to put it on the driver's license. He cheated. And that's why I'm driving this car, period. I ain't stupid though. I ain't stupid. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah, y'all asked, I told. If y'all got a habitual cheater, then hopefully he got uh, he got a lot of long money. Okay. Hopefully he got long money, baby. Y'all can have 
diff separate wings of the house and you can cut them off sexually. Y'all, y'all, y'all keep thinking if somebody cheat that you gotta keep sleeping when you ain't got to keep sleeping with nobody. Most people don't even keep sleeping with each other, even if they're not cheating after a certain amount of a time. You know what I'm saying? It's like rare in between. So if y'all think a, a, a stupid enough woman is gonna still sleep with a man who she suspect is cheating, then I hope that woman ain't you. Okay, most women cut with men off when they're suspicious, point blank, period. Okay, when they're suspicious, they cut them off. They don't try to be Picnisha and keep them from, from leaving the house and, and going off to whoever. They just cut them straight off and start to shopping. Okay, get that money. Thank you, Trey Love. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate that. So if y'all don't understand, then please listen. Most women who don't, most women who marry for security aren't invested emotionally if someone were to cheat okay y'all just have to understand that i'm not a very emotional person anyway only when it comes to kids my kids do you think it's worth it to pay for a luxury gym membership such as yeah sure is sprinkle sprinkle getting that gym getting that meet meet people i can afford to work out there and most likely they have money yeah. So um, you have to also wonder why you're in the relationship. Are you in the relationship for love, fidelity, s stability? What are you in it for? All of them? Well, all of them ain't going to be bent. No one's perfect. So you got to figure out why you're there and, and what's the end goal? What's the end goal? You know, stop being emotional about everything. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. At the end of the day, nobody cares but you. So get your money, get your life, get the things that you want out of life, period. Before you were of a certain age, you wanted to do stuff in life. You wanted to have a certain lifestyle. You, you wanted to do all of those things before you realized you had to maybe eventually one day get married. You were like, oh, okay, well, I wanted to do this. I want to do, but then if I get married, then I got to work. Now, what do you want to do? Use his money to do it, okay? Don't be all emotional because somebody did something that you didn't like what they did just get your money okay half the women in the white house been cheated on they getting their money though okay <laughs> you know michelle obama been cheated on but she getting her money though <laughs> Air, every first lady i'm sure has been cheated on but she get her money tea. Uh, okay it seems like people who are in high society know this un unspoken rule <laughs> control emotion and get your money that is the unspoken rule of the elite and the high society so why don't you bring it down down here to reality to the, to the real people so you all could get some money too. Because how do you think most of those people got rich through marriage? How do you think all those families got old money through marriage? Get your money. Stop worrying about if he out there doing whatever he doing. Just cut him off and, and keep his money, especially if you're married. If you're not married, then that's how you get married is controlling emotions. Because they don't want no crazy woman. They don't want to sign their name to any contract, whether it's a marriage license or what, with a crazy woman. So, if you can control emotions, you are seen as less crazy. But it's those people who can't control emotions that are even more crazy. They're just crazy in a different way, in a better way, in a more strategic way. You got me? That is the psycho slash sociopath crazy way that will get you. So make sure you're crazy in the good way, not, not the bad way. Mm -hmm. wow. I'm crazy in the good way. Okay. Hmm. What if you think, what if he thinks you have a pure heart, but doesn't want to commit? He don't want no pure heart person, baby. He don't want to commit to you, period. Listen to what he's telling you. I don't want you. That's what he told you. And y'all need to start taking your emotions out of it and stop patting the words people tell you. He said he don't want you, period. Point blank, period. That's what he said. 
You have a pure heart. I don't want you. That means I'm going to cheat on you. That's what he just told you. I'm going to cheat on you. I don't want you. He was nice enough to tell you to stop pushing. Men tell y'all all the time. They don't want no relationship. They don't want this. They don't want that. But y'all be pushing them and pushing them into it. And then wonder why they cheat. Because they don't want you. They don't want to be committed. They want to be out and about doing what they do. And so when you try to push them and try to control them into something and then realize you can't control them and they only did what you wanted them to do temporarily, but they still were going to do what they were going to do. Then you wake up, then you'll be like, oh, okay. So he said, he told me with his own mouth, he don't want no commitment. So why am I keep, why am I still trying to push it? He don't want a commitment with you. He's going to cheat. That's, that is sign number one. When a man tell you he don't want no commitment and you try to force it on him, you know, already know he's going to cheat, period. Because he tried to tell you, but you won't listen. And that's another thing people do they they don't listen when they're super emotional they think well i can change him well he didn't mean that well i know he loves me well girl you know he he'll that love has nothing to do with cheating right and if he loved you he'd be pursuing you and trying to get you to commit instead okay so y'all stop trying to stop trying to do that because it makes y'all look very desperate when you try to figure out what stuff means. It means exactly what he said to me. I don't want to commit to you. It means I don't want no relationship with you. You only temporary. So stay that way. That's all they're telling you. Listen. And it will be your fault if you don't listen. Because he tried to tell you. Okay. As soon as you hear that. Be like okay. No problem. He could be your plan B, especially if <laughs> you need something at a time and you've cut him off. There's no benefits. He's going to think you, you you want something from him, so he's going to hop and do what you need him to do at any time. Oh, I might get some, so I'm going to help her out this one time. You know, that could be your little plan B come through, dude. Don't sleep with him and respect his decision that he does not want a commitment. Okay. That's the best thing women can do. Is listen. Um, How to not be so attached. Have to. Have another one. Don't care enough. Keep your mind on the plans. On the, on, on the bag. Have some goals of your own. Understand this person ain't your world. You are your world. You know what I'm saying? They're not as in connected or. Um, attached as you are to them and why, why do you have to do that? And they don't, you know, ask yourself those questions and you won't get so attached. Thank you. The, Hey, she just joined the chat. What's the name of the lipstick shade? Oh, I just put some red and um, this, no, I did this Morphe color. It's called, I can't even read it. It's so small blood something. Can y'all read that? I can't read it. Well, anyway, I mixed it with my other color, um, Venus Kiss from Level Up Cosmetics. So it's these two colors mixed. This is like a just a dark, um, vampy color. It's a dark, like a maroon color. And then I mixed it with Venus Kiss. So if you have this color in any type of, you know, brand, Mix it with the Venus Kiss and you're good. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I knew y'all was going to ask. That's why I had it. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, um, scripting out your emotions to get something. You know, if someone makes you upset, don't react. Get you a pen and paper. Write down exactly what you know is going to trigger their guilt. Without being emotional, you gotta you gotta speak it calmly. Maybe even crying. I'm so hurt. Instead of screaming and cussing people out, stop. Go get your pen and paper. 
pause or get your phone and put your notes in. I'm just so hurt about what you did. <gasps> I stay up all night crying. I can't sleep. See, this is more impactful than just yelling and cursing and screaming and breaking up with somebody. This going to get you some money, some cars, some something. Okay? I can't eat. I'm just so sick right now. I thought you loved me. Do you love me? I still love you. But I'm so hurt. I don't know if I should stay. Period. Now, what is he going to say to that? You're going to be begging at your feet, groveling, telling you whatever you want is yours. Ain't that right? Instead of screaming and cussing out, he, if you start screaming and cursing out, he's going to go on the defense. and start arguing back with you and trying to win the battle. This is how you win the war. Advice on how to handle ex-wife who uses daughter as bait. His daughter is hiding his belongings. Daughter is hiding my belongings. My man is a provider. Stepdaughter is 11 on my nerves. Girl, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, well, you gotta you gotta win the daughter over, girl. You gotta you gotta give give her some stuff. You gotta gift her. Do like Alicia Keys did. Give give the children something the mama want. <laughs> okay, give us up. Give a gift card, give us some money. Tell her she cool, whatever. She'll stop. Kids have a conscience. But you can buy kids out quick. All right. So now he'll be begging and groveling. Thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle. And so here's your cue to get whatever you want. Well, what can I do? How can what can I do for you to forgive me? I'm so sorry. I would never do that again. Blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, I don't know if I could trust you anymore. So I'm not comfortable sleeping with you. So you can go get tested. Okay, okay, done. Number number two. Um I just feel like I'm missing out so much on life. Da, 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 da. You know, sometimes I like gifts and things to make me feel good about myself. And you haven't gifted me in a while. But what do you want? You know, sometimes I sit and cry in my car and stuff like that. And, you know, and then the engine light come on or something, you know. I need a new car. Okay. That's how you do it. This is how you can use your and script your emotion to your benefit. Screaming and kicking people out and breaking up with them and all that stuff ain't going to get you nothing. Okay. This gets you paid. Script it out. Control them emotions enough for you to write out your script. You might be right mad, but as soon as you're finished with it, you'll start to have that smile on your face like, let me get some stuff. <laughs> you know, you still be mad at the person. You can still cut them off in the bedroom, but you're still going to have them around paying them bills, buying you stuff and continuing to pay for you. And this makes them feel more guilty. This makes them put up that money, which makes them feel like they did wrong versus being on the defense like you're trying to control them. So now that you got your little purse, car, wardrobe, jewelry, whatever you wanted out of him. He feels like a man again because, you know, he he gave you something nice that you that you really want. He's working on your forgiveness. He might he might if he's cheating on you for real, he might be texting the other chick that he's busy for this weekend and then she going to get mad. And, you know, then you can say you know, he he ain't going to be trying to get none no time soon. You know, he's going to be trying to work his way back into the bedroom. So you have all this time. And every time you try to get some, you can get something. 
well, I don't know, you know, maybe I, I need a trip to the spa. Okay, I'll get you a trip to the spa. Thinking next time you're going to say, yeah. So you can get so much out of a man after he cheats than you probably can get before. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. How do you think all those women get them jewelry? How do you think those high elite society women get all that nice jewelry? You think he just, her husband just come home with a five carat diamond every other week, every other month? Think he just come home with emeralds every for the birthday? Girl, his jeweler, his best friend. There was a trollop on the lawn yesterday claiming that she was your mistress. <laughs> the next day, flowers with box of jewelry and a security guard arrive at the house. This is for you, Mrs. Wellington. That's the same like they name would be like that. This is for you, Mrs. Wellington. It's from your husband. He says that he loves you very much. She takes the flowers. Opens the jewelry. <laughs> this is very nice. Thank you. <laughs> she still, he still ain't getting none. But she's still getting hers, okay? You see how that works out? This is why we have to control those emotions, okay? There's a trollop on the lawn, dear. Is she one of yours? That's what happens when people get super rich. They just not, they just come with the territory. They just like, there's a trollop on the lawn, dear. Could you take the trash out, dear? Um, they don't even like most people. If you if you notice, a lot of people with sugar daddies, their sugar daddies are married, and half the time their wives don't care because they old, they don't want them no more. They just like that lifestyle, like that society, that high society, that car, you know, parties, whatever they're doing. They don't care about him. They married him to get to where they're going. They're married. They married him for the for the money. So if y'all are so emotional over some man, why are you with them? Are you with them for stability, money, or are you with them because you want to control what they do? I don't know. Broke men cheat too. I'd rather be cheated on by somebody that can buy me something. Okay. So control those emotions. Don't take everything personally. Some some men don't know how to speak to women. They're not as smooth. So just let certain stuff slide. Don't always be looking for stuff to get mad about. That's another thing. People who are highly emotional and highly controlling are always looking for stuff to get mad about. A lot of women are concerned that, oh, if I get a sugar daddy, if I get with somebody rich, they're going to try to control me. But you, a lot of women, you know, you women always want to control everybody else as well. You want to be their mama too. Okay. So if you are worried about someone controlling you, it's most likely you are controlling. Okay. Over dumb stuff. Yeah. Why you didn't come home uh, at the time you said you was, you 10 minutes late. Or why you didn't do, you do this. Or why don't you do, you know, just stuff that don't even matter. Just menial, stupid, little stuff that has nothing to do with anything. And when people are like that, nobody wants to be around them. And that emasculates people and they want to go out and feel like a man again. So they probably mo will most likely cheat. I'm sure there are broke men out there ain't got nowhere to go except for they pick Misha house, but they're willing to risk it all to feel like a man for, for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Because they don't like to be controlled. And most women who are highly emotion emotional are controlling. Okay. Y'all, that needs to go away. That's very masculine. It's very masculine to be controlling, you know, especially if you ain't getting no money out of it. You don't need to be controlling any situation unless it's beneficial to you. Okay. That's what a boss means, manager, you know. Da -da -da. If he ain't paying you no money, you don't need to be telling him what to do. 
You ain't his manager. If you if if you don't want him there, unless you can control him, we know he broke. <laughs> right. If you don't want your man there, unless you can control him and what he do and where he goes and how he spend his money, he ain't about nothing. Okay. He's broke. It's when you get a man you can't control that has that money and options. And I wouldn't want any man that I can control. They they need to be under their best behavior because they already know you can go get another one. So put yourselves in the situations where you have the upper hand, but you don't have to control a thing. Okay. And emotions will help you do this. Emotions will help you do this. I have so many people asking me, well, how am I supposed to be with somebody who thinks I'm the prize, but I'm not attracted to them? Well, how is somebody supposed to be with you when they don't want a commitment with you and they're attracted to everybody else? You know, we will claim someone that won't claim us, but then at the end of the day, we'll be over emotional about someone who told us they don't want us and do exactly what they told you they, they were going to do. You need to just put your priorities in the correct order. Put yourself number one. Know that you're the prize and stop acting off of emotion. Emotion don't get you paid unless it's scripted out. Okay. Emotions don't get you paid unless it's in your script that you done wrote. Script. Okay. And you could use this for the next one. Check, put a check by it when it works. Oh, this one work. Yes, I'll reuse that one. Thank you, Akila Sprinkle Sprinkle. Sending love and, and appreciation. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle Sprinkle. Um, and I'm also the, the video I did yesterday about um trashy, trashy women. What, what was it called? Uh, somebody, a lot of people got mad at that. Y'all, I don't know y'all personally. Y'all can't don't get mad on online because that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> Even if you are trash, you pretend like you ain't not online, baby. Don't be getting offended. Just act like, okay, that's not me. Even if it is, don't act like it. Just hold that emotion. Get the constructive criticism out of it and, and be on the way. Because no one is going to tell you straight up, okay? They ain't going to tell you straight up. They're going to sugarcoat it, bounce around, and then give you like, oh, well, if this, this is trashy, but, you know, if you like it, then wear it with confidence. They're going to tell you that and have you out there looking like a stupid peacock. <laughs> okay, because they don't want to hurt your feelings or they don't want bad comments. I don't care. I'm, I, I really want to help people so that they understand that certain things are trashy. And hopefully that they can control their emotions enough to take the constructive criticism or the inf take the information and do with it what they want. But at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I never said I was perfect, but I'm just helping people that may not know. You know, there are some people that are worse off than others that don't know what they're doing is wrong. OK, so I just try to help. I don't need to hurt anybody. If it's not beneficial to hurt you, then I don't need to hurt you. Okay. It is beneficial for me that people improve their image. It's beneficial for all women if women improve their image. Thank you, Ivana. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I know this is a bit off, but do you feel you lost more doing less calories with fast metabolism? Diet? No, thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I feel like I lost more when I just reduced my calories and focused on something else. Like, you know, I just reduce the calories. You could, I mean, if you're eating negative calorie foods, then fine. That's foods that don't count as calories, like certain vegetables. If you do, thank you, girl, sprinkle, sprinkle. If you do one thing that's trashy, does it mean you are trashy in total? No, it means you chose a trashy choice and a trashy option. And as long as you are um, wearing whatever is trashy or doing whatever is trashy, for those moments in time, you are considered trashy at that time. 
I've been trashy at many times in my past. Of course, I've been trashy for a day. I, I took it off and threw it away. Look like I can't do this no more. It's trashy. I, you know better, you do better, period. You know, um, I got kids to raise. I can't, I got to be an example. So, you know, once you know better, you do better. That's it. You got to make sure that you're not emotional about something and that you're understanding why you're changing or why you're doing something different is to better your life. Okay. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it to better your situation in your life. You're doing it to attract better people to you. You're doing it to get into a better environment. You're doing it to get more pay, maybe a raise, maybe a, a you know, a, um, better paying job. You're doing it for yourself, not doing it because it, you know, uh oh, I'm trashy. I better change. You're doing it to better yourself. Because if you watch some other videos, a lot of what people call trashy, people are actually promoting on other channels. And so you have a class system now. You got a class system of trashy and classy. Okay. And then a lot of people wonder why they're treated a certain way or why they can't get the call back or why they can't get their not marriage material or why a man doesn't want to commit to them and why they're only the side chick or why they can't turn from side chick to wife or whatever. It's because maybe the man doesn't want you representing him. Thank you, MD Sprinkle Sprinkle. Sure, I've realized I create too much drama and therefore destroy many opportunities. Any advice? Yes, control your emotions. Write down what you should say instead in order to benefit from every situation. Sprinkle Sprinkle. It is a choice and it takes discipline. Okay? Discipline yourself. Write down what will make the situation better and beneficial to you and then execute it. It's that simple. Stop reacting and start strategizing. Strategizing. Thank you, girls. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So it's not men are attracted to anything. You can be trashy and still have a man. What I'm saying is the type of men that you're trying to get with may not want you representing him in the long run or for the long haul. So he might mess with you, but then that's it. He might go out with you a few times, but then he's done. If you want, if you want to stay by his side and get that ring and get that last name and get on in the deeds and stuff, you have to represent, which means he doesn't want a trashy wife. He wants a classy wife. You know, so that's what I'm saying. And The classier you are, the less nervous, because someone's asking this question, the, the less nervous you will be around, quote unquote, affluent men, the less trashy you are. Like if you go, if you go somewhere like this, like, like, take, just take my look. It's decent. It's decent today. I tried. You know, I wouldn't feel embarrassed or nervous at all talking to anybody, period, because I know that I'm classy. I know I'm not ratchet. I know I can hold my own conversation. Da -da -da. You know, I, I wouldn't be nervous. They, they would just be normal. But if you, if you're insecure because you, you have some things that may be trashy or ratchet about you and you never fixed them and you never thought about them and you thought you was the exception to the rule and stuff's going to start seeking into your mind and those insecurities are going to start coming out. So make sure that you feel classy when you are around certain people so that you don't feel nervous. How to use sprained ankle as damsel story for Max? Um, well, make it up, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you for the donation. Tell them you broke it or sprained it trying to do a good deed for somebody. I don't know. What are their triggers? Yeah. 
You got to find out their triggers before you can get their money. Use, use their triggers. What are they like? What are they fond of? Are they a runner? Do they exercise? Are they a gym rat? You could say you did it working out, trying to stay in shape. You could say, are they an animal lover? You could say your dog, um, you saved your dog's life or something. Find the triggers. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you wouldn't feel insecure if you did all that you could do to feel confident about where you are and who you're speaking with, okay? Um, well, whenever I used to talk to men with a lot of money, I would talk about whatever I wanted to. They wouldn't care what you're talking about. They're just looking at you. As long as it ain't trashy or inappropriate. You lie at work very hard, like from 8 a.m. I lie at work. You lie at work. Can't, still can't rent the apartment. Offers bath after work and dinner. To told him I took weekend job and he didn't offer anything. He don't want you, Natalie. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I am so sorry. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Get another one who probably looks worse or is a lot older. Okay. I think there was a lot of typos in that, but obviously you have the wrong target. You got the wrong target. Find another target. One maybe that's a little bit older, a lot older. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, what does what do you do when your man don't react to a sexy message or sexy pic? <laughs> Stop. Why are you sending them that? You the prize, baby. And he's supposed to be asking for it, not you just volunteering it. If he ain't asked for it, don't send it. Okay? Especially if he's your boyfriend or your husband. If he's, you know... If he's not, then you shouldn't be sending pictures anyway. Don't ask for it if they don't, don't send nothing if they don't ask for it. Why, you ask? Because it's too pick me shish. You're not allowing them to chase. He don't know who else you're sending them pictures to because you're looking for attention. Okay, don't do that. Um, yeah, y'all know I think that's trashy too, sending them pictures all across phones and stuff. I mean, if it's between like your husband and, and whatever, and very rare and it's tasteful, great, but don't be sending them pictures because that's like, I need attention, I need your attention. It's like begging for attention, it's very desperate. I don't think it's something that people should do because if you think about what it really means, like psychologically, then you wouldn't do it. Okay. Before you do something, try to analyze yourself psychologically and ask yourself, what are you really saying? What are you really doing? Are you do you need attention that bad? Does that mean you're the prize or not? Sorry, y'all. Does that mean? No, it means you're not the prize. I noticed the wealthiest men go for the thinnest women like models. When I observe wealthy circles, they know thick girls in them. Yep, that's true. That's because that's what they consider classy in those circles. Thinness. Control. Self-control. <laughs> discipline. They don't want 
fat genes in their family that don't want to pass them on to their children. They want they don't want their children to be overweight. You know, men think like this. They don't want their women to get fat when they get pregnant and da da da. They they think about all this. How are you going to represent me after we have kids? Thank you, Astro. What are your favorite classy fragrances? How do you discover your level up persona? Hope this is on topic. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, anything, all the Chanel's are classic. All Any Chanel perfume is classic. Any high-end brand is classic. I would go with, I would stay with Bior or any type of Chanel or something like that. Those all are classic high society. If you just, you know, just regular classy, anything that's high end, that's not too sweet. Okay, you want to stay classy, not you know, middle school. All right. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, yeah, they like them thin, girl. Well, I think it's because you know of their peers or who they have to bring you around and that they don't want people just staring like you know so I think that's why I think that's why Eve was was able to get that million that billionaire and Rihanna and um when they were thin I think that's why Naomi could get one. She's being sued by one now, but I think they like that thin look, you know, because that's what's in in their circles. Uh, men that go for thicker women are more like athletes, rappers, you know, young money. I call them like new money are more likely to go for the curvier women and the old money is more likely to go for thin women. You know, that's how, that's how you have to navigate that. You said how thin, girl, I don't know how thin. I mean, if you look thin, I mean, I don't know how they do that. I mean, for me, if you just listen to people talk, some a lot of men who have money, a lot of men who are from certain cultures or different backgrounds or races, they have an opinion about certain things. I mean, sometimes you need to really just take yourself out of your emotions and see how some people are viewed. You know, I don't like men have a mindset people in different high society or whatever have a different mindset when it comes to certain things. That's what they, that, that's how they've been raised. I don't know. But you gotta, you gotta be honest and see, you know, if that's not what they're attracted to, if that's not who they let in their circle, then find a different target. Thank you, Halima. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You lost 33 pounds of quarantine. Thank you for everything. Girl, go ahead. You lost 33 pounds. That's a lot. I mean, I'm very noticeable. So congrats. Yeah, so we have to be honest with ourselves. Are these men even looking for us? Or do they want you as a side piece? Do they like your curves temporarily? Are they going to put your curve? They're going to put a ring on them curves. What they going to do? Or, you know. So, do you dress appropriately for your curves? Is there a way you can class up them curves? I don't know. Maybe you should research how to, you know, how to do that. Also, like sometimes being thick and curvy, you can still have those curves, but just on a at a thinner weight, you know. So I don't know. Whenever I think about curves on a woman and how like if you watch some of the celebrities who were thick and then lost a lot of weight or got real thin in order to play certain roles, like I remember um, y'all know Kerry Washington. Remember she was kind of a little bit thick and she had, you know, on that movie um, about the dancers, her brother and some 
some chick that was about the last dance. I don't know whatever movie that was. But anyway, she wasn't thin like that. She wasn't all thin, collarbone showing and whatnot. Mm-hmm. J Lo too. But as they try to pair you with more affluent looking, um, you know, uh, characters on film, you have to fit the part. So she had to lose weight to get that job on Scandal. J-Lo had to lose weight to get that job on whatever movie. She still kept her curves, but she learned how to dress them and she thinned them out. So you can keep your curves, but if you're trying to get to that sector, I'll say, then you need to thin out them curves. So I guess that's the best way I can put it. Um, And don't be emotional about it. Just if you want something, thin it out. This, the curves are still going to be there if you're naturally curvy. But they'll just be thinner curves. Okay. You said fat bashing is real. It's not real. It's not even about being fat. Your body is your body. You create it like you want it to look. Period. Just like your face is your face. When you get in that makeup bag, you're going to put something on it. You're going to make whatever you want your face to look like. When you get up and wash your face, scrub it, um, put soap on it, put moisturizer on it, you are creating your face. So just like you can create your skin and how it looks and how well you take care of it, you also can do the same with your body. It is yours to sculpt and create the way you desire. Okay, it's not fat bashing. I mean, if you saw my old videos, I don't fat bash. I just say, look, it's your body. Do what you feel is necessary to get the best out of the situation, period. It has nothing to do with fat bashing. Um, Right. So, you know, if a kid call you fat, you fat, period. Okay, just understand. If a kid say you fat, you fat. Ain't nothing you can do about it, but just accept it. <laughs> if a kid call you ugly, you ugly. They're they're very honest. Do something about it. You know, they don't care about your feelings. <laughs> so we have to be honest with ourselves because if we're walking around being dishonest with ourselves and then expect everybody else to be honest to us, well, we're being hypocrites. Okay, your fat is a description. Fat is not permanent. Okay, fat is not a disorder. It ain't permanent. You can lose it and gain it. It's a choice. There you go. And people don't realize that. Um. If y'all don't real, if y'all don't know that fat is a choice, y'all have never. Okay, so the high school that I went to, a lot of girls were very self conscious about their weight at a young age because their mothers trained them that way. Okay, I'm just gonna give it to you. I went to a mostly Caucasian high school, and they would pack their lunch. They would not eat the crap at the school. Their mothers would not allow it. You can't eat that crap at the school. They would have a sandwich, an apple, some carrot sticks, and some type of drink. And that's it. That was their lunch. (laughs) That's what they eat for lunch, girl. Thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle. Someone sent me a cash app. Thank you, Deanna. Sprinkle Sprinkle. That's it. They wouldn't eat no burritos, no chips, no nothing. Okay? Because at a young age, their mom knew affluent men like thin women. So, I want you to marry up. So, this is how you're going to eat. 
just like Tommy Matola had Mariah Carey on a, on a crazy diet so she wouldn't get fat and thick. Y'all remember how skinny she was when she was first came out? And, and since um, then after she divorced him, she she thickened up and been up and down ever since. Now, I'm not saying she don't look good either way. She look good either way. But the the type of diet he had her on was the high society diet. No one knew Mariah Carey had curves. Or <laughs> then when she was on that video with, with uh, what was it, Diddy? She had on that little swimsuit bodysuit trying to show off her curves because she started eating. But for those type of men, they like thin. It's just something that is um, status symbol to have someone like that thin. All right. That's why she, when she try to lose weight, she can do it quick, and she just go on that Tommy Matola diet. That's all she got to do. I'm going on a Tommy Matola diet if I need to get skin. I mean, thin again. Okay. So <laughs> this just the truth, though. You know, it is very cultural. So if you want to get thin, you go on. The I need a rich, super rich, high society husband thin diet. <laughs> you go on the mean girls diet. You go on the screen queens diet, whatever. No carbs. <laughs> I can only eat 300 calories a day. You you go in the dressing room like oh that movie White Chicks and scold yourself in the mirror when you can't fit a size two. Or zero. <laughs> okay. That's what they do. I mean, they want to be thin. That's what they do. A lot of people put more emphasis on their makeup, wardrobe, and hair than their body. Not knowing that maybe that's the main thing someone is actually looking at, um, according to you know what their spouse should be. Okay, so we don't know. Um, somebody said duct tape your mouth. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that might work though. How do I feel about women initiating sex with husband? Why would you want to do that? <laughs> Girl, who the prize? I don't know. Who's the prize? Are you trying to get something out of them? What is the benefit of it? Okay. What about athletic curves? I don't know. I mean, I, it's, I'm not. I am not. A man in high society, so I have no idea what I would find, what I would wife. But it also depends on who my brother wifed, who my colleagues wifed, you know, um, who my mentor wifed. What do they look like? I want to be like them. I like their wife. You know, a lot of people base their choices in life on certain things. I don't know. Yeah, it is cultural. It's like, you know, um, it's just different. <laughs> it is called, it's in, in the United States, it's very cultural because, okay, when you don't have a lot of money, what do you do to entertain yourself? Eat, cook, gather around, throw barbecues, parties, go to the grocery store and eat, fry something up, eat. That's what, that's what broke people do. Okay. Some, somebody said have a baby. Rich people, they join country clubs. They play tennis. They, you know, they have a boat 
uh, they go out <laughs> doing some type of activity or sport. Right. They're going to eat, but they're not going, that's not all that they're going to do. They're going to golf. They're going to play tennis. They're going to play racquetball. <laughs> You're going to play polo. What else they be doing? They're going to eat little finger sandwiches and not giant heaping plates. Right. <laughs> so they have the the cucumber sandwich. <laughs> So they have their um, different differences in cultures and they see certain things as low class. She can't afford a trader? Oh dear. What is she eating over there? You know. <laughs> what are you? Okay, so we know what they think. So only poor countries won't fat want a fat woman. And that's right. That's that's true. Because okay, so culturally it means like in some countries it means if you have a fat wife that you can afford to feed her. It's kind of like having a pretty wife here that you can afford to keep a, a cute wife. That means you make a lot of money. Thank you, Ray, Rising Phoenix. Do you work out? How to keep your figure? I used to work out. I need, I got to get back into the gym. I just Try to eat less. Okay, so um, thank you, though. Sparkle, sparkle. I mean, everybody's weight sometimes fluctuates, but if you can maintain your weight and get to the weight you desire, because I'm still working. I'm still working on my weight. Uh, but if you can get to where you want to be, great. Especially if you're a little older and you're trying to... It's better for your health, too. Positive reinforcement, um, think about the life you desire and will you fit in that lifestyle as you are now? You know, the best way to keep yourself motivated is to put yourself into your future situation that you desire. So do you fit in into that place that you want to be? Mm -hmm. If not, you need to... Um, you know, sacrifice something. Peace, sheer, are the elites also referred to as Illuminati? No. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. I think when I say elite, I, I think I, I think it means like those people in high society that look down upon others because they have different, you know, standards and things like that. That's what I mean on this channel. So, for example, you know, if your mother raised you not to eat certain things and you are watching someone just overindulge in those things, you're going to think them low class and having no discipline or self-control. You know, how you're raised also affects how you judge other people and how you see them. So uh, if this dude's mom, you know, if this affluent man's mother was always about watching her diet, watching her weight, you know, eating this way and da 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 he may look for similar things in a wife. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we, like I said, we can't take what men prefer on how they, you know, how women look personally. That's just what they prefer. That's, that's how they were raised. That's what they want. That's what they see. They want something. Then let them be, you know. <laughs> okay. My husband is white and he prefers me skinny. He would complain if I put on weight. My sister husband is white and prefers her skinny. I notice black men like thicker women. Yes. Um, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. Um, and 
and that's another thing. Like if you have a bad weight problem and you get thin and try to go get you a man and then you let yourself go, they might just divorce you because you got fat. And I mean, men, high society men will divorce women for getting fat. They put that in the prenup. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Do y'all remember uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones and her old man husband? Uh, that was in her prenup that she could not gain weight. That was in our prenup. Like what? <laughs> yes. Rich men will put that in your prenup that you can't gain weight. That you must stay at between these numbers on that scale. Yeah, I think I'm lying. Thank you, Flower Power. I recommend the four hour body by who? Hold on, hold on. Tim Ferriss eating like that will have you lose weight even without a gym. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. Thank you. So they will. They'll have you like you can't. You can't go between these. You can't go above this number. And then they also give you how long you have to lose your baby weight if you have a baby. That's all in that prenup. Or you get nothing. Or you get fined or you don't get this money or something. Thank you, Sheer, for your wisdom. I'm reeling in an affluent man back in my reeling my emotions back in. Your channel also helpful. Thank you, girl. Thank you. X E X Sprinkle Sprinkle. So like if you're trying to go after these type of men, they like thin. Period. There you go. They'll mess with you. They'll mess with a thick one. They're not going to wife a thick one unless they don't care what other people think. Maybe they're, you know, one of the exceptions to the rules. But in the most, for the most part, they won't then. Like, oh, gosh. <laughs> and, you know, think about, like, a lot of those ladies are undercover anorexics or bulimics. They got to stay thin. I remember when I used to go to the gym, I could tell who was on who who had husbands that made them stay thin. I could tell you could tell the women at the gym whose husbands wanted them thin because they they you could tell they were on that treadmill or whatever exercise uh, machine. They were already skinny. OK, they were already thin. They on there hard. Got to lose this one point three pound. He could tell. You know, they be in there. I'm like, girl, you already skinny. What you going to do? Suck in. Buy yourself some time. <laughs> but I, you could definitely tell because, you know, the gym that I, I used to go to was in a very, very nice neighborhood. You know, all the people look at the cars in the parking lot. You could tell, you know, wives taken care of, just Porsche, Range Rover, Benz, you know, Beamer, Lexus. The, the parking lot is just all housewives that are taken care of. So, you know, they got to stay looking good. You're the absolute best with spiritual channel. Uh, Ashura Star Goddess. Sprink, sprinkle. So, thank you. Uh, so, then you can tell the people that they husband don't care what they look like. <laughs> Cause they, you know, they, they husband probably look worse. But you can tell the ones that's really like, I gotta stay in shape. My marriage is all gonna be over if I gain 1.3 pounds. Like they be they be on that treadmill like their marriage depend on it. And I'm like, ooh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, yep, yeah. she even mentioned that too. Like, I remember one time, Kim mentioned that Kanye said that she was too big at one point, and that she needed to lose weight or something. I don't know. All right, so men have an opinion on how much a, women, a woman should weigh or how much they, or how they should look, well, I guess. You know, weight is different, but how they should look or how fit 
or thin they should be. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So here's the thing. No matter what, if you stay thinner or on the thinner side, you have your options. You know, you've got more options. Your options are open, more open. If you stay on the thicker side, you have your options are open, but just not as many. So that's how you need to, to view that. Um, did you see the video on the woman driving Maserati? Oh, yeah. She got out the car and she said, I, he said, what do you do for a living? She said, I'm married. <laughs> what do you mean? She had a nice, she had a nice car. Guy was going up to people with nice cars, asking them what they did for a living. The lady got out. She's like, I'm married. <laughs> what do you mean? That's funny. I think I posted it on my stories. Yes. If you want to meet rich, affluent people, take up a rich, affluent sport. Okay. Join a club. Tennis club or something. Some people can't afford whole country clubs, but they can afford tennis lessons at tennis clubs. They can, um, and then you can make a friend and be on their guest list or, you know, get you a sugar daddy to pay for your membership or something. Thank you, pretty shrimp, sprinkle, sprinkle. Hey, Shia, just want to say thank you. My life is in a much better place now. Thanks for leveling up my mind. Thank you for empowering women. Oh, thank you, girl, sprinkle, sprinkle. I, I try. And see, the reason why um, I'm so tough on women and I don't try to sugarcoat stuff is because they don't hear that. You know how you have kids when you're nice and say stuff nice, they don't hear you. You got to be like, you better do A, B, C, and D or else. Then they hear you, you know. But people that sugarcoat things, because even when I say things without sugarcoating them, people still don't hear them. Even when a man says, I don't want to commit to you, women still don't hear them. A man got to straight up say, I don't want you for a woman to realize he don't want her. Men, at least they were trying to be nice by saying, saying that they don't want a commitment. I say skip all of that and, and just say stuff because we need to save time and energy and confusion on this channel because the goal is to level up and get to the next level. We ain't got time for no sugar coating around here. Um, there, are, I think I commented this on on my last video when people were a few people were upset about my trash my trashy women video. I'm like, look, there are plenty of copies out there that will sugar coat what I say for me. There are plenty of copies out there that will sugar coat it for you. Okay, when you when you're ready to get the tough love, you come over here because you know I don't sugarcoat stuff. It's a waste of time. We already lie to ourselves every single day. You don't need another person sitting there lying to you about what you're trying to improve upon. Okay, so sorry, but I, I'm I'm not in that category of sugar coating and I don't want to be and I never will be so this is what you get but I I guarantee you that your life will improve faster if you stop lying to yourself and letting people lie to you about yourself okay there you go um is there a difference between ego and emotions? Um, well, I think emotions are just warnings to say that something is wrong and not right. If you feel a certain way, that, that means pay attention. Uh, ego is wanting to control certain things or wanting to be right about something. It's, it's more uh, a selfish thing. Okay. Mm 
why what does it mean if a man takes you to a strip club on vacay he's 27 because he's 27 baby that, that's what it means i'm 27 years old it means you're dating too young darling level up get a different target Okay. He's recently been getting irritated when he tells me what to do and how to do things he doesn't know about. How do I turn this from an attitude to something beneficial? <clears throat> Just simply say, okay, I'll try that way. Or, okay, I'll look into that. Or, okay, you might be right. You're not agreeing. You're just getting him to shut it up. And then you go and do whatever you want to do. Just how men do. They tell you what you want to hear to shut you up. And then they're going to go do what they're going to do anyway. So who cares? If your plans are to do exactly what you're going to do in the, anyway, then tell them what they need to hear to shut up and go do what you got to do. You know, some people just like to hear themselves talk. <laughs> Let them talk. I said, tell him he's right. Yeah, LaPeach, you, you might be right. Let me try that way. Do it your way. He said, did it work? Mm-hmm, sure did. Thank you. Move on, girl. Save his masculinity, girl. Mm -hmm. A 27-year-old is chasing you. Sorry, y'all. Hello? Oh, okay. Sorry, y'all. Girl, he chasing you not to give you money, but for his ego. All right? He's chasing you for ego, not to give you money. Mm -hmm. What you got to do is play the damsel story. The damsel in distress story is going to get you the money from that 27-year-old. But he gonna probably expect something in return. You gotta use the damsel story. That way, he thinks if he does whatever he gotta do, you will give in. After chasing for so long, this is the only way he gonna get you is to pay for it, not for free. Thirty six is too young to date, in my opinion. <laughs> if you want him to pay bills, anyway. That ringtone is trashy, straight straight up. It's not trashy because it's something that I chose and everybody loves it. Oh my God, I love Michael. Besides, no one calls me except for like the, the kids school and it's early in the daytime. I don't be around people. Thank you, Easel. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Met up with this athlete. 10 months for your contract. Slipped up and had sex with. Did use condom. He'd been texting me a bunch and calling me when I... Girl, what the heck? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Well. You didn't finish your statement, but thank you for the donation. Okay. I need to hear my ringtone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cause I have a I have a big purse. Or when it's in my purse, I need to hear it. When it's lost, I need to hear Michael Jackson singing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Halima. Sprinkle Sprinkle. And MJ died. You dreamed about him? Oh. Sprinkle Sprinkle, you was young. Girl, you young. You was nine years old. Aww. <laughs> Excuse me, let me put everything non trashy. What would you like me to put on? Beethoven? <laughs> Green leaves? Is that, will, that, will that suffice? Guriano Michael Jackson is here to stay. Sorry. All right.
<laughs> I might be pregnant by my rich boyfriend. He married what to do, girl. Find child support. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's what you got to go do, girl. It don't matter if you married. Tell him, and if you don't do the right thing, file child support. Or actually, I'd file child support first. But you're going to have to take a maternity test. Paternity test, sorry. Don't tell him you're pregnant till way right to whenever you're about to give birth. Request that paternity test and get you, get your stuff get your stuff going because that's all he's gonna do. You're not gonna leave. Not that's all you can do. Work strategically. Cause he's married, uh, you know. He's gonna try to get you to do. He's gonna try to get you to get an abortion. He might poison your food, girl. Mm -mm. Tell him when it's too late, and he he can't get out of it. There you go, sprinkle, sprinkle. There you go. Shoot, what's your number? I want to call you. <laughs> No. Ask for hush money. Keep the baby, then get child support. No, nah, I wouldn't tell no one until it was too late. Okay, period. That's something you go do in private and secret. Because he's married, remember? And, you know, a lot of people always ask me, why don't you ever have a meetup? Because I have what I call subscribers, fans, troll fans, troll fans, people that are um, wishy-washy. And so I will never have a meetup because people can't control their emotions. This is why. Number one, I could never have a meetup because people are unstable and can't control emotions, period. I'm too blunt and I don't sugarcoat enough things to, to make people comfortable in the life that they're uncomfortable in. So you said get security. I still, I could never have a meetup because people are not ready to receive the message on the same level at the same time as other people are. Um, I would actually have to charge a lot of money to make sure <laughs> that you had at least a sugar daddy to be able to even come. And I don't want to do that because I don't like leaving people out. So I just don't have them. All right. So that's that's the reason why people ask me. <clears throat> And that's the reason why a lot of people don't have a bunch of, you know, people around them because you never know. One day you're nice, one day you're crazy, one day you this, one day you that. Some people, some of the people that watch my channel aren't mentally stable. Period. <laughs> and I know that because I can tell by the comment. Some of the people on my channel, a lot of them smoke weed. They might come high. So, I don't know. I'll just, I'll be online for you forever until, until I can't be anymore. <laughs> See? So, there's a reason why. Online is better anyway because there's it's less personal, less emotional. She, she even gave me a funny look. She must think I'm trashy. You know, I have to meet up. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> so I would never have a meetup because people are too into their emotions. They take stuff too personally. Half of them got them crazy chicks. The other half is. <laughs> There's probably a small percentage of people that's normal. Thank you, Ah, uh, Sprinkle Sprinkle. So. We're gonna we're gonna stay online, okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. You had dinner with a high class 
ate like a pig, he ghosted me. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. My mom tried to put me and my brother in etiquette classes. At least learn how to, I had at least learned how to eat properly and sit properly and dress properly. It was too proper for me at the time because I was young. You know, when you're a teenager, you don't you don't care about that stuff. You just want to go and sneak out and be free and go to your friend's house and, you know, but now that I look back on it, I remembered all those things. So like when I'm in, you know, in a place where those manners are required, I have them. I got a girl. I got it. <laughs> like, I know you're not supposed to cross your legs. I know you're supposed to cross them at the ankle. And then slant them like this. You're supposed to have posture. When you eat and you're done with your plate, you're supposed to set your knife across the top of the plate. I know all of these things. So um, etiquette class does not take cost that much money. Or they have free videos now online. Back then we had to... I had... I had to wear a dress and I hated dresses back then when I was younger. I had to wear a dress with pantyhose or stockings and some, some flat shoes. And thank you, Rosalina. Thank you for all that you do, always keeping us on our goal. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate that, Rosalina. And I'm like, why well, I gotta wear tights? It's hot. It's summertime. I did not understand. But it was required for the class. And then I told my mom, look, I know I know how to eat. I know how to sit. Can I be done? I didn't finish. I, I couldn't do it anymore. I was like, I can't do it. I was too young. Thank you, Model XOXO. How to turn off emotions when you're a Scorpio. Not turn off, control control just like you do instead of cussing your boss out every day you can control them emotions and keep your job the same thing sprinkle sprinkle just like a politician does so he can get that vote through strategy and not caring enough and caring more about the bigger picture and the goal that's how you can control it okay mm -hmm. gotta keep in mind the goal keep the prize in mind that'll that'll keep your focus on control all right, um, I'm a Pisces. I control my emotions just fine. So, yeah, learn uh, learn manners because you know etiquette and manners also allow you and keep you in control of your emotions. Thank you, Chilandra. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Hey, Shira, do you think it's going to get harder for pregnant women in the future? Glad to catch you on. What do you mean harder for pregnant women? I don't know. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't understand that question, but I don't understand how it's going to get harder. You should you should not have to be working. If you choose the right man, it should be easier. Okay, you choose the wrong man, it's going to be hard. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. All right, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um. Please don't use your sign to excuse. That's right. Excuse. Don't use your sign to excuse bad behavior. Right. Y'all, I should have put that up in there too. The trashy video about all these astrology signs. It's kind of trashy to talk about. <laughs> Thank you, Rosalina. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Like I'm just saying. It. If you're in a high society conversation in a room, like at a whatever, you don't discuss astrology signs. Okay? There you go. Just so you know. What do you say on dates when they are asking you about where you have traveled, but travel isn't my thing? Didn't you make up some local places, girl, but make it sound good. Oh, I traveled to this little quaint, small town. 
you know, a little ways away from here. It was so beautiful. They had so many historical, just make it up, girl. Then they also know that you appreciate things and they, and they want to impress you. They will offer to take you somewhere even better. But just the way you described, you know, your trip down the street to the next city over will make them see that you appreciate travel and what what not. Let's make it up, right? Y'all got to be creative in this world, you know. Okay, so. Yeah, we don't discuss astrology. We don't discuss how much something costs or how much money someone makes. Um, gossip is a no-no. Okay. Celebrity talk of, and gossip is a no-no in high society. We don't care what Collier is doing. Okay. So leave that. <laughs> Met a rich guy and I got to know his mom didn't love him and even abused him. Is there any way I can profit from knowing such things? You gotta tell him you want to be the greatest mother ever. Maybe he'll make you his wife. Sparkle, sparkle. Tell them about how you're going to be a great mother. The game makes me sigh a lot because ugly men disgust me. But I want the money, though. It makes me feel hopeless no matter how leveled up I am because lose and money ain't easy. But LOL. Yeah, you got to get over that. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Gotta get over that. Honestly, I mean, when I was young, I was I'm cute. Okay, I'm cute now. But when I was young, I was even cuter. I I could pull whatever. Okay. But I was tired of working, darling. I was tired of getting up every day, going to do a job I didn't want to do. Uh, listen to people I don't want to listen to. Deal with them stupid, stanky co-workers. I'm tired. I really look at an ugly face, one ugly face, than 10 ugly faces. I'd rather have money in my hand in one day that it takes me a week to earn after the government take out the taxes, okay? Ugly, that's ugly. Y'all got to understand what ugly really is. That's ugly. And when you look in the mirror in 10 years from now, you won't see ugly because you're going to be worn out tired, run down, overworked. That's going to be ugly. If you if you ain't ugly, then who cares? Let me say that again. If it ain't you that's ugly, then who cares? <laughs> All you got to do is step three feet away and guess what? Ugliness is, is gone. Thank you, model XOXO, sprinkle, sprinkle. If relationship is toxic, is it worth saving? No. It depends on who's making it toxic. Are you over emotional? Are you start over with somebody new and don't be toxic and don't allow people to treat you a certain way. Have your standards and act accordingly. All right. So <laughs> that's how I always have to view it. You can't be so picky to where you're going to wake up one day ugly yourself and still have to go to work. I'm just saying. Look at and I'm just being harsh because that's the truth. You're gonna wake up 55, 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, and you still gotta go work somewhere. Hopefully you don't, but you know. I know I'm not when I I know that when I turn a certain age, I need to be free. Free, I mean, you need to be free at a certain age. I'm free now, but like, 
if I just want to stop all of this and just be free, I could at any age. I'm trying to help other people get there. Thank you, Rosalina. Tell them, Shira, the goal is to work smart instead of hard. Who cares about ugly men if they're lovely providers? That's right. I mean, children don't care if their daddy ugly. They care if their daddy can buy them a car, shoes, clothes, house, vacation, and trips. They don't care what daddy look like. Oh, daddy ugly, but he got money. Daddy, can I get this? Daddy, can I get that? Now, ooh, daddy looks good over there with, you know, at the bus stop. <laughs> nope, can't do it. You take a gremlin and put a suit on him and, and spray some cologne on him. He look good, okay? Don't even matter. <laughs> All right, so you said you're going to look good for both of us. Exactly. You're supposed to look good for both of us. Man ain't supposed to be cute anyway. You're supposed to be masculine, provider. You're supposed to be, you're the feminine is supposed to be pretty. Okay. Beauty and the beast, okay? Hell is old as time. What it make you look good and it makes you look even better, okay? <laughs> you can't with ugly. See, that's I'm sorry, I'd rather be with ugly than be with broke. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you if you're gonna spend time looking for both, what if what if it doesn't pan out? Then what you gonna do? At the next one, is he gonna be both too? You know, sometimes like you just have to say, okay, well, does both even exist at the same time? That's gonna give me what I want. Am I gonna be able to keep it? Am I am I, am I gonna be able to keep both? Is both the man who's rich and handsome, this, how many options does he have? Am I going to have to sign a prenup? You know, y'all don't think about this kind of stuff. Is he really on a business trip? How many women are throwing themselves at him right now? Because he's both. Just like the girl says she's pregnant by the athlete dude. He's probably handsome and rich too. How many women are pregnant with your man's child right now? I don't know. Okay, so what type of life do you really want? <clears throat> All right. You said ugly men treat you better. <laughs> Thank you, Simply Lucid. I have a guy who does everything for me, cooks, cleans, grows food, feminine things, but is broke and kind of gross what to do. Why Why do you claim him? I wouldn't claim nobody broke and feminine. Unless they my child. Girl, unclaim him. Keep, keep him on as the help until you find another one. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's all you could do. Keep them on as the help until you can find another one. <laughs> all right. How do I exude goddess energy vibe? You look so Thank you. Believe it. If you believe that you really are one, they can't help but to exude it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Act like it. Have standards like it. Don't deal with nothing that you shouldn't be dealing with. Say what you want to say. Oh. 
honestly, I think I'm in decent shape, but I think older men want a tight young girlfriend. So I so what want to keep up, right? I say this a lot, but it truly helps. Journal, learn about yourself, and advocate for yourself. That's true. If y'all are if y'all are between the ages of 19 and 30, 27 years old and 36 years old is not old. They don't even have enough money to pay your bills, buy your car, or nothing. Okay. They still trying to build up them credit scores, period. Okay. They can take you to eat. They can buy you a few things, but they can't. They can't do what you probably really want them to do. Thank you, Just Nene. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Hi, Shira. Would you find a sugar daddy while you were still working to lose weight, or should I wait till I'm done? I'm a file. I will find one at every stage of my weight. You can always find another one. Okay. The, the smaller you get, the more options you're going to have. Okay. And it might not be worth it right now to get a sugar daddy, but you can be out there and freestyle it because they're not going to give you much in the beginning until, you know, and then they might become resentful because they think you're trying to, you know, find another one. So if it were me, I would get one at my most confident level. That way I would get what I wanted out of it. Cause I've talked to women who are, you know, um, overweight and they gotten a sugar daddy but they ain't giving them nothing like they they barely giving them something like a couple hundred you know so and you can get one but you ain't gonna get the real money you gonna get you gonna get a splendid daddy okay it ain't gonna be no sugar it's gonna be some splendor <laughs> unless that's what they are looking for but um might get a couple hundred but that's about it I would definitely, I mean, a Splendid Daddy ain't bad if, if it's free money, but um, as you get in better shape, you can trade that Splendid Daddy in for the Sugar Daddies. Mm -hmm. Tips on being assertive. I, I've been a bit of a pushover, and now I'm trying to get out of that mess. Don't be too nice in the beginning. Have standards from the start period from the start don't try to be a people pleaser set your standards from get-go you can do it in a nice way oh so what do you like to do oh i love to do this this this, this and that i really don't i really don't get too much into da da da, da you know um if they ask you something just simply say no no i'm sorry i don't really do that type of thing Set standard from start. Don't be a people pleaser. But do it in a nice way. They won't even dare ask you to do something that they already know you don't, you're not into. If you're the prize, if you have manners, if you look like you can go get another one that has more money than him, he will treat you right. Okay? Most men try to find women who they don't think can improve you know, on them. So they got you right where they want you. If, if, if they got a woman who they already know can go still, you know, uh, get another one better, they'll treat you right. So that's why I'm saying y'all have to set them standards from the beginning. Act like you want to be treated. Act like you can go get another one at any time. And that's how they're going to treat you. It's all in how you carry yourself and how you act. You know, like, you're dating someone. Let's say you're dating someone. You got you got a man. He gonna give you. He gonna break you off some change. You need to look like you can go take his boss if you want. You can go get his boss. You don't need him. You can go get his boss. Somebody else's boss. You know, a woman has that type of power. You know what I'm saying? 
not this is all I can do. This is the best I can do. I need your help. I'm desperate for your money every month. No, look, I, I don't I really don't need you. I'm tolerating you. Thank you. For, I'm letting you be seen in public with me. Thank you for paying my bills. And, and um, because like right now I'm kind of off the market since I am with you. You're blocking me from maybe dating other people who may have more money than you. So you need to be paying them bills. If you walk around thinking like that and talking like and acting acting like that, that's how you're going to be treated. Like, this is how some women live. They won't have nothing to do with you if you're not fully providing for them. They ain't going to let you touch them unless you're fully providing for them. And men know this. But if they can get you at a cheap discount and you don't put them standards up, then they're going to they're going to try to get it. So you're just like, oh, no. And you don't care because you don't try to control them. You don't care if they go out and sleep with their ex because you, you haven't even slept with them yet. So it doesn't matter. You're not claiming them. They can't take you off the market. They might want to. But this is not a dusty. You don't control men with money. You control them with self-control and standards. That's how you control men with money, with self-control and standards. They can be out all day sleeping with the secretary, uh, the mistress, or whatever. But at the end of the day, if they want you, they got to come correct, period. <laughs> and you should be able to live those standards and not bend on them. And they won't treat you like they treat whoever they found off swiping left to right on whatever. And they're going to treat you like the women they, they meet online. They're going to treat you like a prize that they can't have. And that eventually when they get tired of, of meeting up with women that look like hookers, that they don't meet online and getting them stairs, they're going to go find you again. Because you're high class, you have standards, and then they're going to take care of you because they're tired of being embarrassed and seen in public with people that don't look like they pictures, and they're going to come right back to you. Thank you, Ellie Ward. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Love you, Shira. Just got back from an all-expense-paid vacay with someone, and I still gave them gave him none. Good for you. It was our second date. Listen to Shira. Yes. And you're going to get more after vacation, right? He's going to take you shopping, try to impress you even more. Holidays are coming up. Dangle that thing on a string. Don't ever give it up. Holidays are coming. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So, you know, y'all are going to have to realize you can't be afraid to lose them. They will be back, especially if you are mature enough to not block people and to see people as associates, friends, and not, oh, you have to be my man or my boyfriend. You know, when they get tired, they know who has the class, the standards, and what they're willing to pay for at the end of the day. Let them go through, you know, let them go through them uh, cheap t-shirts before they come to claim the real prize, okay? Don't be afraid to let them go explore, especially if you're not even in a relationship with that, with that man. Let them, let them go figure out, see how it feels. And then when he comes to his senses, when he said, well, I got to, I need a date for this, thing and I can't bring them women I meet online and I need to find someone with some class who's going to be impressive to my co-workers, my colleagues, my my clients or something like that. I need to go get that chick over there. That's what I need. And that's how you set your standards and keep them high. You don't lower them. You don't you don't lower them. And when they come when they come calling back after they didn't ghost you for, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? You know, it's just thinking about you. You want to have lunch? Yeah, you're inviting me to lunch. That's so nice. Well, I know this great place in the mall next to, or I know this great place, or it's in Saks. I love their sandwich there. Let's meet there. He already know to bring his wallet, point blank, period. Thank you, Rosalina Sprinkle Sprinkle. Asking for a friend, how should she ask for shopping insurance money? Boyfriend wants to go on vacation together. How much love? Uh, much love. If 
if that person is claiming that woman as a girlfriend, then she don't she should just not be afraid to ask. If they're not a couple, then she needs to make up a story that it's for something else. You know, or say that she doesn't have enough money. She lost her job. She took a pay cut. She needs help. Damsel, damsel in distress story. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If y'all are afraid to ask for money, that ain't your boyfriend. That ain't your husband. Okay. Okay. So remember, don't be afraid to lose someone. You're going to lose them if you give it up. You're going to lose them. You're going to lose their respect if you give in for cheap. The long haul is what you want. They will go out and date other chicks. But when it comes to a serious person, they're going to think about you and they will be right back and you will get everything you want after that. And I've seen it happen. I've done consultations with women where this was the case. And then the dude will come back a year later, months later and give them everything. Because they've gone out and explored and they couldn't find nothing better nothing classier and so they come back and get what what can represent them the best okay don't burn bridges don't block people it's immature you can't control grown men with money they got too many options the best way to control them is to control yourself okay that's how you if that's what you want that's how you get it Over-emotional women are not great examples as, you know, as mothers, most men don't want a wife over-emotional women. Thank you, model XOXO. Should I cheat with sugar daddy if I think he did already? Do what you what, do what makes you feel better inside. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Here's my thing. It doesn't matter. They don't care. If you tell them, you stupid. Don't tell them. If you're going to cheat, don't ever tell people, okay? That's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Cheat for yourself. Don't cheat to make someone jealous because all you're going to do is going to backfire on you and you're going to be without. Unless you're going to cheat on somebody who wants to replace that man and pay your bills, okay? Um, Y'all really have to think on a more mature level if y'all want to win at, the, at this game. Thank you. Yes, cheat up. Don't cheat down. <laughs> because if you treat, if you get caught cheating with trash, a man does not look at you the same. Okay, you gone, baby. You gone. Hmm. <laughs> Cheat up, baby. You can't, you, you cheat backwards, it's over. Mm -hmm. The man who I'm going to cheat with has money. He's a sugar daddy. Well, girl, don't. It, it, are you married? Because it ain't cheating unless you're married. And you ain't, you single until you're married. So have fun. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You sign a contract, you ain't cheating. Either. Sprinkle, sprinkle. He ain't putting a no ring on it. You ain't cheating. <laughs> I'm too friendly, I've been told. I'm really friendly, so I guess that's why people think they can try me. Then stop being friendly. Stop being a people pleaser. That's what people think friendly is, people pleaser. Thank you, Rosalina. Is 1,500 euros good enough to ask for the trip shipping? Yeah, I mean, sound good to me. I'd ask for more, but <laughs> it's good for if, if you just meet, meeting him because he's going to spend more on the trip anyway. But yeah, um, yeah, being over friendly is is also viewed as being a people pleaser and also desperate. Whenever you see somebody kissing somebody, but desperate, okay, no respect. 
Stop being too nice. Be mannerable. Be polite. Be respectful. That's it. They don't deserve anything more. You don't know them that well. There's no reason why you need to be kissing their butt. If you do that, people don't respect you. Or they see you as fake or something. But I would never be over friendly to people. Unless they all can't hear. <laughs> then I'm going to smile and over exaggerate my words. <laughs> So that they know I'm not a threat. But if you're doing that and their hearing is good, then you're going to be seen as desperate. Thank you, Miss Golden Smile. Hey, sure, I'm 54, but easily passed for 35. What age group should I be targeting? And what age shall I leave? Um, you 54, you need to be targeting 70 something year olds. I don't matter how you look, it's your age. They're going to be able to tell when you open your mouth that you're not 35. You 54. You can look 35 all you want, but when you open that mouth, this is not going to sound like a 35-year-old woman. So I would say maybe you can pass, maybe you could say 45 and up. And you need, they'll say, oh, you look good for your age. And you go for someone who's much older than you. And if you look way younger, they're going to think they have a real price. So you can probably get way more money. I would say at least 65 and up, baby. All right. Should you give your half blind dusty neighbor a chance? He's interested. I would rather you give a gremlin a chance because at least they've been on TV. At least they get royalties or something. I don't know what you're doing, girl. Is his name Fetty Wap? Is this. Do he got some money? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> no. <laughs> People got too much time on their hands. Just trying to tell y'all need to get a book or start reading or something. Um, <clears throat> Shira, please help me. My rich boyfriend said he wants to marry a virgin. How he will not marry me. He wants me to have his child without marriage. What should I do? He is rich and would support us. Girls, this sounds like a story I hadn't heard before. Hmm. So you're going to, nah, -uh, because they're going to take your child from you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You, they gonna they gonna snatch that child from you, okay? If they're rich, they're rich, rich. They will take the child from you. They don't because you would bring shame to their family. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Don't be dumb, girl. Don't be dumb. Tell him no, thank you. I'll go find someone who values me as the prize and will make me the bride. Have fun. Good luck. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm out. Know your worth. Know your worth, baby. In America, everybody, I would say 99% of people get married after they've not already had sex with other people. So, sprinkle, sprinkle. Know your value. And they marry rich. Okay. Um, they're just going to take your child. Take custody of it. You can't afford no lawyers. Be smart. How do I know I'm settling? If deep down in your mind, you already know this is not the life you desire. You don't want the life you're in. If you're not happy, you're not satisfied, you don't wake up excited to live your day. That's how you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. If he suggests break because I'm too demanding, how do I cash in after girl? He he trying to be nice by, by saying we you, we about to break up. 
sprinkle, sprinkle. He really breaking up with you without having to deal with your emotions. That's what that means. Taking a break, it means I don't value you enough because I'm willing to let you slip away on a break because I can't deal with your toxic control. You're demanding too much. You're doing too much. I really want to break up with you, but I'm afraid that you're crazy. So I'm going to say we on a break and then I'm going to slowly ghost. That's what he'd really tell you. Girl, I wish somebody would say on a break. <laughs> on a break. There's your standards right there. If you accept that break, you're not very smart because he's breaking up. Just be like, okay, well, you know, we don't have to, it don't have to be a break. If you, if I'm too demanding for you, you can't handle all of this, then great. You know, just say so. <laughs> I can go do better. Now, obviously, we can't afford this, so bye. Because this is really a break up. Okay. I wouldn't be waiting around on no man on no break. Shoot, was he on a break for? He would. Hmm. <laughs> Lunch break. A man who truly wants you shouldn't put himself in a position to lose you. Exactly. He don't really want you, girl. Read between the lines. Would you do that to someone that you really wanted? Nope. I wouldn't even do that with my kids. I need a break for you. You got to go live somewhere else. Never. I don't want to talk to you for three days, children. Nope. He don't want you, girl. Read between lines and be out. Mm-hmm. How to deal with girls who are jealous because you always dress nice and do makeup and get frontal wigs and stuff. Girl... They're supposed to be jealous. Okay. What do you think? If they can't do it, they're supposed to be jealous of it. Now, they can use that jealousy in a positive way, which is to motivate them to do better, or they can just be mad and jealous. Either way, you have nothing to do with it. Okay. Tell them to get on your level. <laughs> Get on my level. I would like to know how big is the age gap between you and 25 years, baby. Big enough to, to stay looking young and always getting what you want. Sure, I seen him texting another woman. What would you rob? What would you, Rob, do? What would you do? I mean, is it your husband? Is it a sugar daddy or is it a boyfriend? Because y'all keep getting confused with what each of them are. You said, should you rob him? Yeah, girl. Is he your boyfriend? He's your boyfriend. Okay. He ain't your husband. Does he pay your bills? Are all your bills paid? I'm asking y'all questions for a reason. Mm -hmm. Do you need him? Is what I'm saying. So you're going to stay with somebody that don't pay your bills, texting another woman, and you don't even need him. Where's your, where's your man? Where's your other man? Don't tell, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Get all you can get out of them right now. Ask them for, for something really big. <laughs> then if you say no, use my script. I saw you texting another woman. It really hurt me. I stayed up all night crying. 
I can't sleep. I can't eat. I'm so sick right now. Thank you, Amanda. Aren't you scared of being a widow too young? No, I can get remarried or use all that money to do whatever I want. Sprick, sprinkle. I ain't scared to be no widow. <laughs> Thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle. I, believe me, I'm not. I'm, why would I be afraid of being a widow? I'll be a young widow. Um. Yeah. So use the script on them. Don't overreact. I thought you loved me. Do you still love me? I can't eat. I can't sleep. Oh, I'm so hurt. I don't know if I should leave or stay. Be scrolling through your phone. Oh my God, I love this purse. He'll be trying to buy it for you, girl. Get something out of him before you leave. All right? But if he ain't paying no bills, I don't see why you're still there. Anyway, we're there, period. You see that? Y'all, honestly, most people are programmed to marry for certain things. My mom been married so many times. Like, she, a widow is just like, you know, okay, y'all know that um, Medea movies, all her husbands are widowed. She's widowed from several husbands. <laughs> My third husband, God rest his soul. Okay, that's that's gonna be me. Maybe if I remarry. Maybe. <laughs> um some people make marrying a career. Like they get them old and on, on a respirator or something, and they'll be like, they'll be kind of old older themselves, but not, you know, they'll just keep you got blood. What, what kind of medication are you on? They'll be checking off lists. Okay, I think we can get married. I got to get on that insurance, though. Got to get on that insurance policy. So, <laughs> some people want to be wifey. I want to be widowy. <laughs> Uh, Y'all are silly. What well, you can be a widow at a young age. I know young widows. They their husband got shot, died in a car accident, had a bad aneurysm or something. People people can die at any age, and some and James might live to be ninety nine. Who knows? I might die before him. Who knows? So you can't really base it on that. Honestly, I was just being silly, but you really can't base it on that. Um, some people got longevity. <laughs> James probably has longevity, y'all. I want a sugar daddy just so I can die and leave, so he could die and leave it all to you. If you ain't his wife, he might leave it to his kids, baby. All right. Yeah, I don't know the law. Any advice on how to be more feminine? Yeah. Um, I know controlling emotions is a very big part of it. And also how you speak, the tone you speak, how you word things. Um, smiling is very feminine. So, but not cheesing, like, but like, just having a pleasant look on your face and looking approachable. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I'm leaving. I got to go. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Sprick, sprinkle, y'all. Um, remember, controlling emotions. It will get you a lot further in any situation. Get you a lot more money, too. Okay. Learn that discipline. Don't make excuses.
just be the, the one who's disciplined enough to get the results that you're desiring, okay? Mm-hmm. How I deal with rural professors or... Y'all asking the wrong person. <laughs> I wouldn't let, like, honestly, when I was taking courses, I, I took a few courses after I got with James. I would drive his car to class. He had a nice, he had a drop top Benz. I, I made money, more money than professors, basically. <laughs> Okay, I don't know, baby. I, I can't answer your question. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Get you a sugar daddy. You ain't got to worry about it. Okay. If your sugar daddy make more money than your professor, then you know, whatever. I wouldn't take anything personally. I really wouldn't care enough. In fact, I would pretend I didn't even hear him like, huh? <laughs> What'd you say? Act like you didn't even hear him. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I gotta go, y'all. But Thank y'all. See y'all later. <laughs>